How to Focus Your Business to Succeed, created by The Wizard of Paws. This class is all about the pieces of the puzzle and their choreography. Basically, the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. We will use BOPUS, by Online Pick'em and Store Process, to explain the components of a modern closed-loop retail model. In lesson one, we started by looking at the three tasks of retail. We then moved on to a discussion of the business's most important asset, its customers, and how to turn a consumer into a customer. And then we got an overview of the IBRAM model. In lesson two, we used the buy online, pick up in the store model, or BOPUS, as an example of how to use the various components of the IBRAM model. So in here in lesson three, we will look at what can be done with all this knowledge and this focus. So what can I do with all of this? Well, now that we've closed the loop, we get to explore what we can do with all of this information. So Unified Commerce takes Omnichannel, adds in robotics, IoT, drones, self-driving cars, and et cetera, to make it work effectively will require extensive AI in managing the new world. In addition, AI will not only enable what has happened, will help figure what, what will happen. So you can use this information to tailor your education for your specific needs of your employees. You can monitor staff retention and determine what's the probability an associate will leave the current position to take up another. When is a machine likely to fail? In fast-changing computer preferences and agile competitors require retailers to be lean and enable a predictive, not reactive approach to retail. Using a consolidated framework will allow retailers to make informed decisions and optimize their operations, resulting in a powerful, seamless shopping experience. Faced with the onslaught of information from all aspects of their business, from supply chain to stores to consumers, Retailers need to filter through the noise to transform these disparate data sources into consumer-first strategies. And being able to vet employees for potential, potential employee. So in the customer area, we can build shopper profiles and we can build personal assistance to help them directly. We can bring in natural language processing to help talk to them. We can have a customer service that learns from past interactions, so the retailers can tailor their conversations with individual customers, drawing upon concerns or preferences those individuals have expressed in the past. They can use to attract and retain customers, with a plethora of innovative competitors providing shoppers with immersive shopping experiences. Traditional retailers need to engage customers in a personalized and relevant manner that is unique and inspiring across all touch points. You can help deal with customer attrition. You could build target marketing so you can target the market based on what the customer is looking for. You can communicate using uh, social media. Again, you can generate customer recommendations that you can help drive all of this work. And finally, you can track their viewer habits, even if they're not customers. In the merchandising area, you can use this to develop an effective marketing campaign that's tailored to your business strategy. You can develop product recommendations. By using location-based analytics, companies can accurately determine when a customer is in close proximity to a particular retail location and ensure that they receive not notification pending regarding promotions that a store is having. They provide seamless product discovery. Being able to find products in your store is critical. You can differentiate products. One of the key things is being able to differentiate your products from your competitors. You can provide real-time pricing. Merchandising, you can develop insights from the marketplace, consumers, and competitor data. AI business intelligence tools focus industry shifts and make proactive changes to a company's marketing, merchandising, and business strategies. And finally, you can do a competitor analysis. This, allows, this includes giving you insights into their revenue streams, 
their more successful products, their personnel, their key competitive advantages, challenges they face, and performance on social media. So let's look at the logistics area. We'll start with self-driving automobiles. We've already talked about those. Well, let's look at inv inactive inventory. Inactive inventory is simply money you've got sitting on the shelf that you can't take advantage of. So you want to make sure you minimize the amount of inactive inventory you have. You want to be able to forecast your inventory. What are your needs going to be? You want to be able to optimize your inventory so you've got just the right amount, not too much and not too little. You want to use robots in your manufacturing area to help reduce the cost of building things. And you want to have a flexible supply chain in order to service a wider range of customer demands that are moving from mainstream to niche. The retailers need to be able to think their traditional supply chain in favor of adaptive and flexible ecosystems that can quickly respond to customers' shifting behaviors. Logistics. Again, this is where you want to use your robots to help move things around. As we've seen the logistics nightmare that's occurring right now on the uh, on the docks in California. And warehouse robots. These robots help move things around in the warehouse and they interact at the same time with people. So let's look at the next area where this model can help you with security. It helps with fraud detection, being able to ident identify fraudulent activities and link that back into your business. Facial recognition, using deep drone networks for detecting intricate facial images and then relating those to your customers, for example. you got to worry about uh, privacy issues here, but it, it, you can do it. Shoplifting. You can hunt for potential shoplifters. The goal is prevention. If the target is approached and asked if they need help, there's a good chance the theft will never occur. And body language. You can, you can use this work to detect body language and relate it back to suggesting that someone is uh, intending to shoplift. And so, you, again, you can alert your staff to help them go talk to these folks before they actually end up doing something wrong. The next area is adapting supply chains. Supply chains today are broken primarily because of the virus, but because, in part, they're not diversified. The virus has demonstrated how important it is to have a resilient supply chain that can adapt quickly and continue to deliver during times of disruptions. Building resilience is a matter of establishing contingencies, engaging in flexible resource planning, and in some cases, adding redundancy for critical products in your system. Shopper is a superset of customer. This includes those who are wander around your website building a shopping basket, but not buying anything. Shopper's use of the online channel has increased the need for discretionary product categories. Expect shoppers to reduce many high traffic in-person activities in the future, including going to the mall. Customers are becoming more mindful about how they're spending. So they're looking for more ways to save money when shopping. And they, they're taking steps to be more disciplined in their choices. In addition, because of the virus, customers, consumers are becoming more comfortable without buying, without trying products first in the physical store. Just as for sales, online has to be an integrated part of your supply chain process. In physical brick and mortar stores, the inventory turnover ratio has decreased. This leads to higher capital requirements and increased markdown if the retailers are driven to sell off extra inventory at the end of the season. So this is where inventory management becomes a critical part of the supply chain. To leverage the excess store footprint that they now have because of the omni-channel, they have created state-of-the-art mini distribution centers to fill in this excess footprint. On the supplier side, they're having to diversify their supply trains to mitigate dependencies on geographically concentrated suppliers. Online has caused a lot of problems with supply chains. 
online is more expensive than traditional brick and mortar logistics because inventory must be held in the network. To help address the combined challenges of full fulfillment costs, service requirements, and productivity improvements, in, in, retailers have sought to keep inventories closer to the customer, the mini distribution center. And as such, that's helped reduce transportation costs. Retailers are now starting to collaborate even with competitors for delivery of goods to their customers. So they're exploring various kinds of partnerships with each other. It's really good if it's a non-competing retailer who could end a consortium-like partnership to use each other's distribution centers or common 3PL provider to achieve wider geographical reach with little additional capital expense. Retailers have historically forecast demand based on sales in prior years, but the current crisis has upended the underlying assumptions, rendering these historical statistics less effective. The inability to predict demand has a snowball effect on the retailer's ability to hold the right amount of inventory, plan seasonal merchandises, and avoid unnecessary markdowns. So they're using AI to predict optimal distribution routes, inventory levels, and allocations. An interesting concept has emerged. Retailers have borrowed a concept from the airline industry by creating control towers. They can now quickly reallocate inventories analyze and debottleneck warehouse operation and rebalance the timing of their vendors. So as we've seen, by providing a closed loop system, the IVER model helps the retailers focus on their business to succeed. How to focus your business to succeed. I I'm the Wizard of Paws. My name is Richard Halter, and to help you understand the complexities of the retail world, I've written a book called Art to Retail. It's available on Amazon. In addition, I've started a school of retail. My first course is on Unified Commerce. Other courses are coming. All of the standards in this presentation are available at omg.org slash retail. If you want a copy of these slides, please reach out to me at richard.halter at cox.net. Again, thank you.